Before becoming famous for the Fosbury flop, he was a sophomore in high school just trying not to flop himself. It was an act of desperation. High jumpers typically used a scissor kick or forward roll to get over the bar. Fosbury couldn't clear five feet four inches until he changed his approach. Five six I'd never made before and I knew I had to do something different to get over that bar and so trying to lift my hips I leaned back to get my body out of the way and it worked. Five years later in 1968 21 year old Dick Fosbury was going for gold before taking off he clenched his fists. I'm focusing all my energy uh, to to make an attempt that I've never tried before. Running for gold, a step at a time, eight to be exact. He cleared the bar at seven feet, four and a quarter inches, setting an Olympic record. Once I was over that bar and I, I felt space between me and the bar, I, it was one of amazement and, and awe. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a feeling that I'll never forget. A feeling of weightlessness that sculptor Alan Tykeson was asked to create. I love in my work to, to try and make bronze look weightless. Molded out of clay and cast in bronze, she immortalized a legend. So much of it is just the design, getting the garb right and, and the gesture of the jump. The jump that will now live forever on Oregon State's campus. Uh, something I'll never forget. This is wonderful. All right, so that uh, the statue sitting right outside Dixon Hall. It's actually on the old Bell Field where the track and field events used to, to stand. The statue has a pole. It stands right here, seven feet, four inches, four and a quarter inches, the exact height he, he made to win gold.